buildings, uh, uh, power plants and things like that. And that's where all the kids would go up and drag race. Linda told me that's what they were actually doing that night was up there drag racing in the car and stuff. So um, as they were getting ready to come back into town, it was about 11 o'clock. She told me it was around 11 o'clock, no cloud, or it was a starry night, sort of brisk and cold but the way it is now, about the same type of weather. And as they were coming down one of the little back roads by the old North Power Plant, uh, they thought what they were seeing was just a person standing in the middle of the road. And as they got closer to that figure, uh, Linda said, that's not a man. That's what she told the elements of other people in the car. And she said the headlights hit the figure. The eyes were red. She said almost like a nocturnal animal. And she said it was a brilliant red. And that's when she said she saw wings come out. Now, at this point, she said that it turned and ran toward the North Power Plant. I asked her if it flew or if it ran, and she said it hobbled through the grass, very clumsily, in through the grass. So this was the, the first actual sighting that was recorded in Point Pleasant. In the PowerPoint that I don't have today, I had a, a couple other instances of some other sightings. Uh, Clinton, West Virginia, Salem, West Virginia, and then everything kind of stayed in Point Pleasant for about a year and a half to two years. Now, somebody asked me a little while ago about the sightings in, in Chicago. You know, you have current modern day sightings in Chicago. Uh, I get emails and, and letters and people coming to the museum constantly from all over the world, you know, uh, that have seen strange things that they think may be connected to the Mothman story. And that, that very well may be. It's just hard to validate that, especially with social media and things like that. You get a lot of people saying, well, you know, I, I saw this thing, and could it be the Mothman? It could be. Um, I just am a little more versed in some of those original sightings because I was born and raised there. And then as I got older, uh, I was able to sit down and interview and talk to a lot of those witnesses. Now keep in mind, a, a lot of those original witnesses, including Roger and Steve and Mary Mallet, do not want the press attention, they don't want the media attention. They would rather be left alone. They will admit that they did see it. So to me, that validates the story even more because 55 years later, somebody would have to come forward and said, look, you know, we were all drinking that night, we made the whole story up, so let's just end it right now. But they will actually tell their family, I've talked to some of their family members, we did see it, we don't want to talk about it anymore. Okay, so, anyways, but has anybody been to Point Pleasant before? Okay, most everybody has been to Point Pleasant. Um, you know about the museum and the festival, um, you know about the festival not happened in the past two years, so we're, we're planning on that hopefully taking place again in 2022. With everything going on, we, we were advised that there's too many people to, to concentrate in the space. So if you come to Point Pleasant, uh, it's a small town. It hasn't changed much since 1966. Uh, everybody knows everybody, you know, good neighbors. A lot of people, you know, had the same jobs they did back in the 60s. So uh, I always give everybody a little history of Point Pleasant. You know, it was the, the first uh, battle of the revolution took place there at uh, Twinkley Park, which is right downtown. That's where the Ohio River meets the Canal River. Chief Cornstalk was a, uh, a vital part of the, the history. He was murdered uh, over a land dispute and supposedly cursed the town of Point Pleasant for 200 years. So. Some people bring that into the Mothman story. They think, you know, that the Mothman, uh, the, there was a jail explosion in 1976, the Silver Bridge disaster, which was the worst bridge disaster in US history, happened December 15th, 1967. So a lot of people think that the, uh, the uh, Chief Cornstalk curse had a lot to do with that. Other people think that it was, the Chief Cornstalk curse was made up just like the Mothman story. You had people that believe in the Mothman story. Some people thought it was just a big sandhill crane. Some people thought it was an owl. Uh, John Keel himself told me that I've never seen, I've seen a lot of owls, but I've never seen one that stood five, six feet tall. Sandhill cranes, there are a lot of those sandhill cranes up in the TNT area. 
And but Linda told me that what they saw resembled more of a man. It didn't have skinny legs like a, a sandal crane or a stork or anything. So a lot of the witnesses, what they saw, you know, they, they told me, they said, look, you know, other people might have saw a sandhill crane or an owl. That's not what we encountered, okay? So Linda Scarborough and the other three, they come back to town. They pull into uh, Tiny's Drive-In. It's now Village Pizza. So if you ever come to Point Pleasant, you can actually go to the spot where they pulled in to let somebody know what they had encountered, okay? The guy who owned the restaurant was named Gary Northam. He still lives in Columbus. I tracked him down a few years ago and just called him out of the blue. I just wanted to talk to him for a minute. Uh, he owned the restaurant, and Linda actually worked there as a waitress at that time. And I called him up and I said, uh, you know, I told him who I was and everything. And, and I said, can you tell me a little bit about what happened that night, November 15th? 1966 and he his timeline job right with Linda's because she said it was around 11 o'clock that they saw it and his timeline told me it was a little bit after 11 because they closed it at 11 o'clock he said I was in my office I was doing paperwork I had a kid out there mopping the floor somebody started banging on the windows on the door just carrying on banging on the door he said who is it and they said it's Linda and Roger they want in so he said, let them in. They came in and told him what they had saw, and he called the Sheriff's Department. That began the investigation of the Mason County Sheriff's Department. So before I hung the phone up, I asked him, I said, do you believe that they saw something? And he said, I have no doubt. He said, they were white as ghosts when they came in my door. And he said, I was the one that called the Sheriff's Department. They did not want me to call the police because they knew as soon as this happened, people would make fun of them, they'd call them crazy, and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, over the next four to five months, you had over 100 reported sightings. Okay, a lot of those uh, sightings were not reported to the police. I talk to people every day at the museum. Elderly people will come in the museum and they'll say, hey, we saw it, but we didn't want to tell anybody because we knew that people think we were crazy. You know, so they just kept their mouth shut. 55 years later, they tell me, you know, we saw this thing. Um, this actually hit the newsprint. You know, you didn't have the internet. You didn't have social media. Uh, John Keel, who was a writer in New York City, heard about this, okay? He comes to Point Pleasant to investigate, and off and on for the next two years, he stays in Point Pleasant. Okay, and the product of his visit was the Mothman Prophecies book, which came out in 1975. The movie with Richard Gere is loosely based on the, the book, uh, Mothman Prophecies, okay? But it is a, an account of everything that happened in Point Pleasant all the way up until, you know, two years later. A lot of people think that when the Silver Bridge collapsed, that all of the Mothman sightings dissipated and went away, but that's not true. Uh, I have a lot of archives and interviews and newspaper clippings from things that happened clear up into the 80s. I have people that come to me, they'll, they'll probably come to me today when I'm at the museum and say, hey, we saw something last week. <clears throat> it's hard for me to validate any of that stuff. So um, you had all kinds of people in Point Pleasant seeing strange lights in the sky, a lot of UFO activity at this time pretty much in the tri-state area. Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky was a hotbed for, for flying saucers and, and strange lights and things like that. So some people thought whatever this was they were seeing was a product of the UFO activity. 